the transport window. The transport window is where your recording controls are located. You can open the transport window by selecting Window and Transport. The transport window is a floating window. That means it stays in place and it can overlap either the edit or mix windows. It doesn't have a title bar or scroll bars and it can't be resized. However, you are able to adjust the display through the view menu. If you disable expanded, you'll just see your recording controls. You can choose whether or not to view the counters and MIDI controls in this compacted view. And let's expand it out again. This is the full view of the transport window. There happen to be keyboard shortcuts for many of the commands in this window. These are important for you to learn. We'll be describing some here, but you can find a full list with your Pro Tools documentation. Let's close the Mix window and let's take a look at our transport window. It's divided into the transport control section, the main sublocation indicators in the middle, and our MIDI controls on the right. The transport control buttons are used for playback and recording and you're going to recognize most of these. Clicking play starts a playback from the current position of the counters. Stop. Pressing zero or your space bar will also start and stop recording and playback. By the way, you can record at half speed if you press shift and control or command in Mac with the space bar when you start recording. If you want to play back at half speed, Hold down the shift key while you press the space bar. Clicking rewind or fast forward will jump you back or ahead in the increments displayed in your main location indicator. Entire seconds or bars, for example. If I hold down the fast forward button, I will jump forward now in increments of a quarter note. Or in back of increments of a quarter note. If under the Options menu, my Link Timeline and Edit Selection and Link Track and Edit Selection are enabled, then when you click anywhere in a track, you'll reset the play position. This is usually easier than using Rewind and Fast Forward. The keyboard shortcuts are one for rewind and two for fast forward. If you want to hear playback while rewinding or fast forwarding, enable the audio during fast forward rewind option in the operations tab of the preferences dialog window. It's like the scan button on a CD player. And generally, it's a good idea to keep this option enabled because it makes it pretty easy to find a spot in your session. By the way, the sound doesn't play back fast or in reverse, and MIDI tracks, of course, won't play at all. You can choose to scrub a sound backward or forward with the scrubber tool. This we'll pick up in a later tutorial. On the other side of those controls, we've got Return to Zero and Go to End. Clicking Return to Zero sets your playback position back to the beginning of the session. Clicking Go to End sets your playback position at the end of your session. The keyboard shortcut for Return to Zero is Enter or Return on the alphanumeric keyboard. The Go to End keyboard shortcut is Option Return or Control Enter on your Windows system. Next to the Return to Zero button is the Online button. This will synchronize your playback and recording with what's called SMPTE timecode. We'll be covering synchronizing Pro Tools to video in later volumes of this course. To the right of the Go to End button is our Record Enable button. To start recording, you first need to Record Enable your track. You press this R button here. Then you need to arm Pro Tools for recording in the Transport window. And you can disarm the recording process by clicking the same buttons again, both in the Transport window and on the track. When your track is Record Enabled and you've armed Pro Tools for recording, you will start recording by pushing Play or pressing the space bar. You can stop with the space bar or press stop. Let's undo that and disable recording on this track. In Windows, the number 3 on your alphanumeric keypad or the F12 key will enable recording. On your Macintosh, you hold down Control, Command, and the space bar at the same time. In Windows, you can choose from the various recording modes on your system by right clicking on the Record Enable button. On your Macintosh, you control click the Record Enable button to access these modes. We do have a chapter dedicated to the various recording modes. I recommend that you check that out. 
Next to the record enable button are two small indicators that look like LEDs. The top one is lit when any track is record enabled, i.e. when the R button is red on a track. The lower green indicator is lit up when you enable track input only monitoring. This is when all tracks monitor their selected input regardless of whether any regions already reside on the track. This means you'll only hear current input signals rather than what's already on that track. Let's disable that. Next to the transport controls are the main and sub-location indicators. They display where your current play position is in whichever time unit you select. When one indicator displays one unit, the other will switch to another unit. This display corresponds with the main and sub counters at the top of the edit window. You can also enter a position manually by clicking in a field and typing in a new value. The up and down arrows on your keyboard will let you increment. Now let's look at the number fields below the transport controls. Take care to enable a pre-roll. It's white if it's active, same with post-roll. Enabling the pre-roll makes your playback start before the current value in the start field, by the time interval you enter in the pre-roll field. The time units you see here will match those of the main location indicator. Post roll is similar, it's activated when the button is white, and you enable this to make your playback continue past the current value in the end field by the amount that you specify. With pre or post roll enabled, you're able to use the pre and post roll flags that are located in your time base active ruler. Flags are green when they're on, just drag them left and right of the start and end indicators. Command K on your Mac or Control K in Windows toggles pre and post roll on and off. The start, end, and length fields display the region within your start and end indicators. Length indicates the duration of the selection. If both read zero as I've got here, your playback will continue indefinitely. If you enter a value here, your playback will end when it reaches the specified value. If you're recording, you can enter start and end positions here to punch in and out. Having the pre-roll enabled will help you punch in because you get some lead time before your recording starts. The last item on this side is called the Transport Master. It's generally left at the default option, Pro Tools. You would change this if, for example, you wanted another machine to control the transport functions, like one of DigiDesign's add-on mixing consoles. Now let's take a look at the final section of the Transport window, the MIDI Controls area. These controls are all related to tempo, meter, metronome settings, etc. The controls are blue when they're enabled and they're gray when they're inactive. On the left, we have Wait for Note. If this is enabled, Pro Tools won't start recording until it receives a MIDI event from your MIDI controller. This is the option you need to enable if you happen to be jumping from behind your workstation to your keyboard and you finally start playing. This way you don't have to be in a panic to get over there. This function will work also if you're recording audio tracks from a device with a MIDI interface like most digital pianos. Just have a MIDI cable connected into your MIDI interface from the keyboard, and then when you start recording the audio track, recording won't start until you touch the keys. This is really handy for solo engineer musicians. Next is our metronome click button. Enable this if you want to hear a click according to the meter and tempo specified beneath. If you double click on this button, you'll open an interface where you can edit some of the parameters. We cover this topic in our tutorial on the metronome click on and off. Next is count off, which gives you the metronome click for the number of measures that you specify and according to the tempo and meter indicated here. If you double click it, you'll open the same options dialog box. 7 toggles the click on and off and 8 toggles the count off on and off. The count off click will play even if the click button is disabled. The last button in this row is MIDI Merge. When you enable MIDI Merge, any new MIDI data that you record is combined into the existing MIDI material on your track instead of replacing it as a new region. This is great for creating loops like drum loops. 
For this to work, you need to enable loop playback under the Options menu. The notes you play in each repetition are then added in, thus building up your drum loop. Now keep in mind that this doesn't work in loop recording mode, where the MIDI regions are all automatically replaced. This is only for loop playback. Looped playback is a handy command for listening to multiple takes. We'll be learning about this later. And loop record mode can be activated from the options menu as well as from the record enable button. Our last row of options concern tempo. This is the tempo ruler enable button. We're going to cover this in a separate chapter on setting your tempo. Enabling this button activates any changes you've made in the tempo ruler. Pro Tools gives us our current meter in the meter field, but we can double click on it to open the meter change dialog window. We can choose the resolution of the meter as well. Let's change it to a quarter. We can also change that resolution with the note button here. Underneath is the tempo indicator field. We can also adjust with this slider if we activate the field. Again, this value is in beats per minute. Adjusting your tempo like this doesn't affect any regions you've already recorded. And this concludes our overview of the transport window.